안녕하세요 블록미디어 정아인입니다 지금부터 저희는 만타라 네트워크의 CEO를 만나보도록 할 텐데요 일단 영어로 간단히 여쭤보도록 하겠습니다 Hey, nice to meet you How's it going? Nice to meet you too, thanks for having me This is Andy, what's your name? My name is John Mullen, uh, CEO and co-founder of Mantra Yeah, last time we did it, could you please start by giving us a brief introduction of the Mantra and your company? Sure. So um, Mantra is a layer one blockchain uh, for real world assets. So we purposely built, purpose built a layer one solution for asset tokenization effectively. Um, Mantra has been around for about four years. Uh, we initially started as a DeFi project back in DeFi summer. Uh, our native token is called OM, OM. Uh, trades on Binance, um, Bybit, OKX, other major exchanges. Not on Korean exchanges yet, but soon. Soon, yeah. <laughs> soon, soon, hopefully. Soon, soon, <laughs> soon. soon. Um, and uh, yeah, so we've been around for, for some time. Um, we're in, currently in our test net uh, for our layer one, and our main net's launching soon. Um, as for myself, I'm from the US originally. Uh, I live in Hong Kong. I've been in Asia for the last 10 years. Um, and I've been in crypto, I bought my first Bitcoin in 2013. Um, so I've worked in exchange business, brokerage, DeFi, uh, you know, building a layer one, so kind of all the different areas of the space, and um, yeah, happy to be here today and talk more about what we're doing. Yeah, I have a quite long term learning journey to get in your mentor, right? Absolutely. So, you know, mantras, like I said, four years old, but in actuality, kind of where we're at today is just the culmination of like my entire time in crypto, and a lot of it was. Trying, failing, trying, failing, trying, getting a little bit of traction, you know, then coming back and having to start over again. Um, so it's definitely been a journey. Um, definitely not without its ups and downs. Uh, it's I been, so. yeah, like, like everyone, right? And like any entrepreneurial experience. Um, but it has been a, an amazing ride. And um, just like with real world assets, I do feel like Mantra is also just getting, just getting started. So we have a, a long way ahead of us and we're, we're very excited to keep building the, the future of, um, you know, tokenization. Great, great, great. And like, what drives your strong interest in the RWE? Um, it's a good question. I mean, I think it's something that uh, has just, again, been a natural progression of us trying things in the space, seeing what worked, seeing what didn't work, and then, you know, trying again. Um, I believe that blockchains are perfect financial ledgers. Um, so they're meant for finance. Um, tokenization is effectively finance on chain in many instances, uh, across different types of asset classes that may not have, you know, been accessible to many people in the past or liquid um, in, in, in markets in the past. So it just is a natural progression of utilizing blockchain uh, to improve the existing system, in my opinion. And you know, I think one of the the things that's really, you know, striking to me about why it why it matters is like for myself who's been in crypto for a long time you know interacting with different types of products whether it's you know tokenized or sorry stocks or real estate or things and most of my net worth is in crypto is very hard and that's coming from someone from the united states you know middle class like you know well-to-do kind of guy background whereas if you're from you know latin america parts of latin america or southeast asia africa you don't have access to any of these things um, but you might have a mobile phone, you might have crypto in your wallet, and why shouldn't you have the same access to Tesla shares or real estate or private equity funds or all these other different types of products like I can have, um, but in tokenized form. So I, I do think it just is a, a novel use case of the technology, which really legitimately will have significant benefits for humankind if done properly. Um, and hopefully we'll be you know, part of that story. Like everyone wants like like one of the map of the long term investment, long term strategy to getting a blockchain to making a our WA right now. Sure. But I think the only a few people knows about that because the Koreans are really good at like financial vibes, are really good at like on on ramp and off ramp. Yep. All like good for us. But I think just not non Koreans are really need to our WA. Absolutely. I mean, I think for us, Korea market is a very interesting one. Um, my wife is Korean. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Oh gosh, I've never heard about before. <laughs> yeah, so I, my my wife is Korean, and um, and actually my board member, one of our investors, is also Korean. Oh. So. Um, and you're 
we really know about the Korean Rally. Well, I'm learning, and I think we want to learn more. We want to be more active here. Um, we want to participate in the community. You know, do things with you guys, do things with the locals, <laughs> and have more of a presence here. I think it's a very, very interesting market. Obviously, like crypto crazy market. Uh, um, <laughs> You know, but we want to be a part of, of, of the Korean, you know, crypto scene and Web3 scene. And we believe RWAs can be, you know, a good focal point, a good entry point into that. Um, but it starts also with community building, getting to know the local, you know, market, how it works, how it operates, who are the right players. All of this stuff is very important. So we're understanding, we're learning, and um, hopefully we'll be doing more stuff here soon. Mm, really good, really good. And like... Next slide is how do you see the converse, convergence, convergence of the blockchain and traditional like a trading fight involving? Mm. So I am seeing a lot of convergence right now, <laughs> to be honest. Right. Um, no, I actually say pretty regularly that RWAs have already achieved product market fit or PMF at the institutional level. Um, you know, JP Morgan has a permission blockchain called Onyx. Right, right. Uh, they have done, I think, over a trillion dollars of um, on-chain bond settlements or treasury settlements, um, maybe even a couple of trillion. So, like, that is a legitimate use case that's actively being used at an institutional level today. On the retail side or permissionless blockchains, it's still slowly but surely happening. And you're starting to see a little bit more adoption, you know, with some of the tokenized treasury products, Ondo being one of the bigger examples. Um, but you have others like Open Eden and Matrix Talk and whatever. Um, you're starting to see, you know, much more significant uh, TVL of tokenized products on chain on permissionless blockchains. Ondo is actually one of our partners, so I've got to give a shout out to Ondo. Um, but so actually, it's funny in Korea they say what one Ondo equals one condo. Right, like APT, like APT is one apartment. You're but, right. but you know what? You know what we have? One ohm equals one home. There we go. <laughs> we gotta make that, we gotta make that go viral in, yeah, in, in Korea. I, one home it. equals one home. It's um, a really good marketing. Uh, I know. I know. Well, okay. So anyway, back to <laughs> back to the initial point. Um, you know, it's starting to happen, right? It's starting to happen on chain, um, on permissionless blockchains, but it's still only a few billion dollars, which is you know a drop in the ocean compared to the multi-trillion-dollar you know RWA economy. So we still have a long way to go. Um, and I think we're seeing pretty significant uptake in some of the verticals and use cases that we're exploring, whether that's um, real estate. So we announced a $500 million deal with a multi-billion dollar real estate conglomerate in the UAE. Where we have bigger ones coming, literally actively working with governments um, for on-chain title deed transactions. So real estate is coming, TradFi is coming in the, in the, into that market. Um, fund tokenization, whether it's money markets like they're doing with BlackRock, or uh, private credit funds, private equity funds, VC funds. All these things are getting tokenized and we're working on deals actively across all of those. So, you know, the names that are starting to play in the space that, you know, we're working with are as institutional as it gets. Banks, um, you know, sovereign funds, um, multi-billion dollar hedge funds, like all these guys are in and they're looking at it actively today. So it's happening and, um, you know, we're, we're very excited about it. In your opinion, is it an excitement around the RWA just hype, or is it truly the next big thing? Um, there's definitely a lot of hype. Oh. Hundred percent. Really? There's definitely a lot of hype. I think there's some real stuff. I mean, there's there's legitimacy. There's legitimate stuff happening. Um, I think we're one of the people who are building legitimate stuff, but there are others. But you know, with a lot of RWA, I think people are. Like in general, with any hot trend, people try to latch onto a narrative and build around a narrative, whether it's meme coins or AI or restaking or whatever, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so everyone tries to pile in when something becomes hot and build in that space. That being said, it's very hard to be successful in real world assets because honestly, one is not really a te like technical differentiation is limited. It's more about execution, delivery, connections, licensing, compliance, trust, like all these things which take time, effort, money, network to build um, and to grow. And it's just not that easy, right? Like, you know, if you don't have a license or don't have plans to get licensed in RWA, then forget it. You're not a real player, legitimately. Um, if you don't have the ability to bring size onto your protocol, you're not a real player. 
because we're talking other ways are you know trillions of dollars right so you need serious capital serious liquidity serious backers um and that's just not that easy right so like i think it will not necessarily become a winner takes all market there's going to be we want a lot of people to, to to be actively participating um but i think more so than other areas i think there'll be less winners I like that. I understand your opinion. Like, are there only a few big winners getting a hype? Yeah. But in these days, are uh, only a few projects are surviving for that. Yeah. Maybe it's just the Ondo is starting the first Ondo yep. and making a next step for Matara. Yeah, I mean, I think like most people, if they if you if you talk about RWA, they'll probably recognize Ondo and Mantra. Oh. Um, you know, we're I mean, literally the number one and two biggest. Uh, RWA projects that are like pure RWA and we've kind of gone back and forth a little bit on who is bigger who is smaller but you know they're a really strong project like I said they're our partner um, they're doing some interesting stuff we have a little bit of a different um, a different flavor right we're building a chain we're building an ecosystem they're building you know different types of products on chain um, and an app and lending and borrowing and a few different other things that are really crucial parts of the you know the ecosystem um, you know and we need more people like Ondo. We need we need more chains, honestly, that are trying to do this stuff too. Because um, in an efficient market, or even just a free market, like competition is good, right? Like I I I want to be the best because I'm super competitive. I want to be number one. Uh, I hate losing. Um, I like yeah. winning, but I really hate losing. <laughs> Everyone does hate losing. Yeah, I really just hate losing. Uh, yeah, but but you know. Competition is good. It makes all of us better. It makes all of us have to work harder. And, you know, again, like, I think us and Ando are, are in a unique position because we have that mind share, because people are aware, um, because we're in the top 100 on CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko. Um, I mean, they're on Coinbase. We're on Binance. I think they're technically on Korean exchanges, too. Right. Like Coin1 and yeah. other kinds of... I don't know the piece of, but I heard... I know that Ondo is listed on Coin1. Yeah. Other COVID, maybe. We're working on Korean exchanges, too. Sure. We'll get there eventually. Everyone one home like equals one home. <laughs> right, like Korea really loves, really loves the like invest the global projects. Yeah. So it will be helpful. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. I mean, we need to be here, right? Uh, uh yeah, a really increasing like institutional adoption of the RWAs. But where do you think about the retail sectors on all each other? Hmm. You know, so retail is hard. Um, and I don't necessarily think it's hard because they don't necessarily want the products, although that is a something to consider, right? Like, particularly in crypto, particularly in the people who are interacting on chain today, they tend to be more crypto degen, they, you know, they tend to be more crypto native, and they have a different investor profile than, you know, investing in a tokenized treasury that's giving you 5%. So RWAs by nature are not necessarily as speculative but you can still create interesting financial structures surrounding RWAs, use them as collateral, use them in different ways that are composable, which I think make them very, very useful and very, very interesting. Um, that being said, the trick with retail is that's when regulators get involved. I mean, they're always involved, but they really, really care about retail, um, how you sell, how you transact, how you you know distribute these types of RWA products. In many cases, these RWAs are securities um, or, or very, close to a security so you got to be you know a bit careful and cautious how that works but um, I think the I think the regulatory landscape in certain jurisdictions is is becoming more clear I think there's going to be more venues where you can do this compliantly where you can invest in things easily legally and you know have a place that has a, a, a high quality of assets interesting product suite and the ability to do interesting, you know, on-chain stuff. So we're trying to build that. We've been heavily focused on the Middle East as our licensing point. Mm -hmm. We have very strong relationships in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, uh -huh. um, which I think is probably going to be the epicenter for RWA. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm sure of it. Oh, really? Yes. Until the U.S. opens and does its thing, it's going to be the UAE. But the USA is going to take a long time. Right. Yeah. I heard about the lot of crypto projects are really interested in UA, right? Yes. Because of regulations or 
is actually in our DBLA meta, it's yes. going on to be really bullish to the Dubai or like Abu Dhabi. Absolutely. So I think you know they have um, they have progressive um, you know forward thinking regulators. They have a central government you know led by the sheikh um, or the sheikhs who are supportive of the technology. They want to push Web3 adoption. They want to push blockchain. They want to push smart city. They want to make Dubai and Abu Dhabi the cities of the future. And they want to put a lot of emphasis into attracting talent, attracting businesses, attracting capital. And to be honest, they already have a lot of capital. <laughs> um, right. You know, the sovereign funds in, in Abu Dhabi, the, some of the biggest, you know, institutional players in the world are going there because that's how you get, you know, Mubala, ADQ, you know, Adia, all these big multi hundred billion dollar sovereign wealth funds to invest into your fund, to give you liquidity. Um, so it's becoming a very interesting time. Interesting, very, very uh, And yeah, and what challenges have you in, encountered while building a regulated blockchain for our WAs? So I will say, our blockchain is not regulated. Oh, okay, that's the point. That's important. I wanted to make that very important. Our blockchain is not regulated. Um, we believe that uh, regulatory enforcement happens at the application layer, not the protocol layer, except when you're distributing tokens. Oh. Right? So if I'm selling tokens for my protocol, for yeah. my L1, that's a regulated action, regulated activity. But if I'm just operating a blockchain, it's a piece of software. Okay, right. But if you're operating an exchange, on a blockchain, uh -huh. where you're selling, trading, buying, on and off ramping, these type of things, those are regulated activities, right? Right. So, so we have purposely built a permissionless blockchain, permissionless blockchain that is open for anyone to read and write onto one one side of the, of the layer one, and the other side of it, we call it like a permission layer, uh -huh. is where you have to go through an onboarding process at the application side to be able to interact with some of these regulated assets, right? So we do we do take a, you know two separate approaches. You could have a DeFi suite over here that anyone is you know, totally permissionless, as well as a permission layer over here. Um, but back to your you know initial question, you know building a regulated use case for blockchain is very hard, right? Um, we are both building the the chain and an app, you know, so the exchange that sits on top of it for liquidity. And I see this in three phases. I see it in the supply side of bringing high quality assets on chain and getting them to have people buying. Then secondary phase is liquidity, transferability and trading. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a very hard thing. It's going to take a long time. Right. That needs secondary market venues. You need regulatory buy-in. You need liquidity. You need all types of things. And then phase three, I would consider composability, which is you know, composability across DeFi primitives, lending and borrowing, margin, collateral, etc. Right. Composability across chains, composability in other parts of DeFi ecosystem, permissionless side of things, that'll be down the line. Um, but within that, you're facing regulatory challenges, you're facing um, you know, technical challenges, operational challenges, you're dealing with asset class by asset class, jurisdiction by jurisdiction, all at once. Um, and you know, honestly speaking, at the same time, you have to run a business. Uh -huh. You have to manage a team, which is hard. Like running a company is hard. Yeah, right. Um, just you know, as as it is. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a regulated thing, so that's hard. It's capital intensive. That's hard. You got to raise money. You got to get mindshare. You got to do all these things that have to come together at once. You know, and I think we're in a unique position where we have mindshare. We've been building for a very long time. We have a unique view on the market. We have strong connections in, in a particular jurisdiction that have given us a unique advantage and first mover advantage. Um, and we're executing very successfully right now. Now it's important for us to continue executing and deliver and kind of bring this dream to reality because you know we want to be a we want to be that iPhone moment that I talked to you about. Seriously. Okay. I have very big ambition for where this can go. <laughs> it's really interesting. Like I saw the lots of interviewers like that they are really like high emotional thing or maybe too trusted, too, mm. too trustworthy for their, their projects. Yeah. They're selling their projects too much. But sometimes I saw that some co-founders are like, or other similar chef levels are really confident. Yeah. It looks like you. Thank you. It's so emotional. Yeah, well, thank so you. I, I, I appreciate that. I mean, it, you know, 
this has just been my life for the last 10 years. And, you know, obviously I care deeply about it. I care deeply about the problem we're solving, the team that I'm working with, and, you know, the, the community that we're building for. So in, in the end of the day, it's like, I don't ever feel like I'm working because it's just me living. And, um, you know, it, it, it's a very privileged position to be in because, yeah. you know, I'm 32 years old. Oh, and, um, you look more younger than that. But, um, you know, I, I already know, like, this is my life's calling. So, like, oh. it's my purpose for being born. And, you know, once you have that, it's just like, okay, now it's just go execute, deliver, and keep trying to keep working. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, keep going. Okay. Yeah. I, I say I'm built for this. I, I believe it. Interesting, interesting. Okay, like the success stories. Success like, stories? Yeah. For the what time does so it's just like make global so you buy the real estate? Yeah, sure. So yeah, so that 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 deal is a pretty interesting one. So we've been working with this developer called Mag. Mm -hmm. Um and we've been talking to them for some time and trying to, you know, negotiate a deal. And, you know, we were fortunately over, you know, after probably five months or so, we were able to finally get the deal done. And effectively what we're doing is we're doing a tokenized uh, real estate offering of $500 million US as the first, the first tranche. And within that $500 million, effectively what we're doing is we're tokenizing the development of an off-plan real estate property um, in Dubai called Katura Reserve. So Couture Reserve is a very high-end luxury real estate development in Dubai. Um, this bond or note offering is going to be paying a yield in stablecoins to the people who participate as investors. So 8% roughly in stablecoin. We will additionally give, you know, 4 to 5% in OM token. Um, we'll probably underwrite to the downside, so guarantee at least 4 to 5, but it could go up. Right? So it could be 10, could be 15, could be 20% additional. Depends how OM price does. But it's very, very safe investment. And the reason I can say that with you know, a degree of confidence is, you know, one, it's over collateralized by the actual land. So the land is worth more than the $500 million of the bond. The issuer of the bond is called Mag Group. It's a multi-billion dollar real estate developer. They've been around for 60 years, I think. They're guaranteeing it fully. Fully? Fully. So that's two. So land, issuer, credit, corporate credit, and then they're also over collateralizing it by a $70 million mega mansion mm -hmm. so that if they default on paying, you get to keep a very cool real estate asset. So it's like triple collateralized, very safe and a very attractive yield, you know, potentially 13, 14, 15 percent stable and, and potentially even more. And, 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 and. Okay. Well. <laughs> after uh, the tenure of the loan is done, so you get paid. You know, maybe it's a three-year loan, right, as an example. So 8% or, sorry, let's say 15% one year, 15% the next year, 15% the next year. You can actually take back your principal and then invest into the equity of the home. So you can participate in the financing and the appreciation of the actual asset, which is cool. Really interesting. Yeah. Really, really interesting. Actually, our, like, our readers and viewers are really some, close on crypto. They don't know about the financial price, right? the web yeah. financial price. So they really need to have this information. Already. Yeah, I mean, I think these are things that are, you know, they've never been accessible to people before. Mm -hmm. Normally, the people who are taking these loans are banks. So now it can be done from you or me or yeah, other viewers or not. Yeah. we can do it. Which is cool. Why should why shouldn't we all be able to participate if we know what the risks are? If we know that it's being done by a legitimate, you know, issuer, legitimate people, we're doing it in a regulated, compliant way. It's safe. It's trustworthy. These are all important things, and um, you know, we want to build that like ability to trust, you know, being on chain, basically. What motivates your interest in coming to Korea? My motivated for coming to Korea? Yeah. Um, Except your. Wife. My wife is my wife is Korean. Yeah. But um, you know, my wife's Korean, board member Korean. Um, I've always loved Korea. I always I always like coming here. Um, I love the food. I mean, yeah. I eat a lot of Korean food at home, but because uh -huh. um, my wife cooks a lot. But I love being here for the food. The people are very nice and friendly. Seoul is an amazing city, and you know, I'm I've been coming here a few times this year to learn a little bit more about the crypto side of things, and it's a very attractive market for us to explore more. So I want to be here more. I want to spend more time here. It's not too far from Hong Kong where I live, so easy to come. Yeah, yeah. So I'll definitely be here more. Um, and you know, end of the day, 
we're excited to keep building relationships in, in Korea and and really uh, have a big presence in this market. Just for like, because the Korean markets are really focused on retail. Right? Yes. But the B2B sides are really small to get it because of arguably website is going to be actually specialized in B2B. Yeah. But in Korea, it's really hard to get in like B2B sides. So just yeah. only farm the token sales. Yes. Or maybe just trading volume. Yes. Not using like DeFi or kind of thing. Yes. So it's really hard to get in. So what do you think about the Korean markets that survive the market, Korean market side? So, you know, to be honest, as I mentioned, like we're on most major exchanges. Mm -hmm. The two ones that we're missing are Korean market and US. Mm -hmm. So, of course, not being able to have that type of buying pressure or buying potential, you know, is a big thing, right? So, like, of course, we want to be listed on Coinbase.com, uh -huh. working on it. Okay. Of course, we want to be listed on Bitthem and Upit, working on it. <laughs> Yeah, um, every person was like that. Yeah. Right, so, right. you know, we, of course we want that, but, you know, I think there is strong institutional partners here as well. You know, we've been talking with some of the conglomerates um, because of the connections, you know, that we have to, to Korea through through my investors. Um, actually, the Korean one of the Korean sovereign funds is an LP in my investors fund. Um, so, technically, the Korean government is like... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not for okay, advice. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble. Do your own research. <laughs> yeah, do your own research. This Korean means like Koreans that do all the research at DIOR, right? DIOR. DIOR Koreans like Susano Bunguaseo. Not your tips with others, not make it about these about their statistic viewers. Yes. I'm not sure I can repeat that, but uh, thank you for saying it. Yeah, because it's really hard to speak against Korean. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and finally, is there a question you wish that you. The final question. Yeah, final question. question. Is there a question you wish we had to ask or something you would like to add? Um, so I think what, well, maybe I would want to talk a little bit more about our mainnet. Mainnet, right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we've launched our Hongbai testnet. Um, actually, the second phase of Hongbai um, earlier this year at Token 2049 Dubai. And in uh, one week, we're going to be launching the next, the third and final phase of our testnet, which will be the final testnet going forward, which is called Dukong. Oh. Dubai, Hong Kong. So, oh. Hong Bai, Hong Bai, Dukong. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we've been talking about the mainnet launch, which publicly I'm saying, or we've been saying, after the summer, before the U.S. election. The U.S. election is on November 5th. So, sometime between now and November 5th, our mainnet is coming. Um, which we're very excited about. We're going to have uh, a lot of new Ardo Bay assets across real estate. We have some aviation financing deals that we've been doing, like tokenizing planes. Um, you know, we're doing some stuff with uh, sovereign governments. We have Big Web, two giant partnerships coming. So uh, I, I talked about this a little bit um, accidentally yesterday at the Story Protocol house. Uh -huh. uh, this idea of Omtober. Omtober. Om double. Omtober. Not October, Omtober. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, I understand. Omtober. We're hoping that Omtober is going to be, you know, October is going to be our Omtober. Right, Omtober. One home, oh. one home, and Omtober. That's the that's the that's the mantra. Um, the mantra for Omtober. Yeah. Okay, got it. So so we're very excited about what's coming, and um, you know, hopefully you guys can participate and, and learn more about us. And you know, for Koreans, if you want to learn more, please you know do reach out. And we can see how we can do more with the with the Korean community. Mm, right, right. I hope so. Yeah. Thanks for taking thanks for taking your time. My pleasure. Thank you yeah. for having me. Thanks for shooting us. Yeah, this last interview with talk about the viewers. Hey, say bye. Say bye. Thank bye. you so much. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs>